If you're running free RTOS on your embedded device and wonder how you can connect that device to Azure IoT, you have to watch this episode of the IoT show with Wellington and Dane, where we're going to have plenty of information about a nice middleware they put together just for you. That's today on the IoT show. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. Thanks for joining. I'm Olivier, your host. Today, we'll talk about connecting free RTOS devices to Azure IoT. And for that, I have the right people, the people developing a fantastic middleware for you to do exactly that, connecting free RTOS to Azure IoT. And they are Dane and Wellington. Let's start with you, Dane. How are you? Who are you? Short introduction about yourself. Hey, how's it going? So I am Dane. I am a developer on the C SDK team and helped write the C SDK middleware for FreeRTOS. Awesome. Wellington, how about yourself? Hey, Olivier. From Wellington Drives, I am a program manager on the C SDK team. So we work day in and day out creating the solution for small devices to get connected to Azure. The right people. That's exactly what I was saying. So. Not everyone knows what free RTOS is. Uh, aside of like, if you're an embedded developer, you must be familiar with free RTOS. But for those who don't know, Wellington, can you remind us what is free RTOS? And then we'll talk about this middleware and why we built it. So just in one shot, tell us everything about free RTOS and the middleware. Absolutely. So you see, we're creating this solution that's probably going to be running on small devices. So we're thinking about microcontrollers like this. And these devices, they really can't run a full operating system like Windows or Linux. They would be running either a lightweight operating system or no operating system at all. So they will have like this super loop that will have everything running in an infinite loop. But that approach of having this infinite loop makes it super hard to do things like multitasking, uh, which a lot of our customers need for their IoT applications. And in this scenario, having a lightweight operating system or a real-time operating system like RTOS would help them by bringing them a lot of features like um, the scheduler so they can they can use tasks. Um, they, they all have uh, things like queues, semaphore, mutexes, and most of all, that would allow them to be deterministic in terms of uh, the responses, the response time for their applications. That's all possible by using a, a real-time operating system like uh, FreeRTOS. Yeah. And um, we don't have to say numbers here, but uh, my understanding that free RTOS represents a huge part of the actual market, uh, you know, in the silicon world, correct? Absolutely, yeah. There are multiple okay. uh, real-time operating systems out there, including our own uh, Azure RTOS. But yeah, there's a large number of uh, embedded developers out there uh, using a free RTOS, which is the reason why uh, we created this. We wanted to provide an option to simplify connecting uh, free RTOS-based devices to Azure. Nice. So let's let's look actually at the middleware itself because um, you guys are from the embedded CSDK. So there's no reason for someone to not have been able to connect a free RTOS device using the free the 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 open source uh, embedded CSDK already. So let's look at the middleware itself. You just said it will simplify free RTOS developers' life to connect to Azure IoT. Let's look at how and and why uh, the middleware will help them. Absolutely. Let me show you my screen. So this is our repo, our main repo on GitHub, where you'll we'll find uh, the Azure IoT middleware for FreeRTOS. And if we look down here, you will find a session called the library architecture. So this is pretty much showing the big picture of what the middleware actually is. And as you can see here, uh, pretty much all of these boxes in green are the middleware. So it has uh, the embedded CCK, which is providing access to all of the Azure functionalities like uh, device to cloud, cloud to device, device uh, twin, direct methods, IoT plug and play, device provisioning services, all of these IoT services. And then we have the free RTOS middleware that is creating, uh, exposing a set of APIs which is the simplifying part because now uh, these free RTOS developers, they can create their user application. 
and call these APIs an API like send telemetry. And then the free RTOS middleware will do will know how to do all of the orchestration on top of free RTOS to do the right calls and make that uh, to make that happen. You will also see here that we have this approach, which is intended to make it super easy for uh, embedded developers to use it, which is bring your own network stack. So you'll see that mm -hmm. MQTT, TLS, and TCP, they're all uh, pieces that don't live within the middleware. So the embedded developers out there can pick and choose whichever works better for their uh, platform. And then when they bring this all together, this is how uh, the middleware will work getting their devices connected. Nice. So uh, super modular, especially for embedded development, it's important you just mentioned that uh, they might have their own TLS stack that they prefer to use or have to use uh, and, and more. Maybe a little word about how do you develop with the middleware? What are the tools that uh, the, the, the middleware is based on and how would an embedded developer uh, embed the middleware in their code today? Maybe Dane, can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So if I could show my screen really quick, we have uh, a porting layer essentially for all these different platforms. Um, we take a, a dependency initially on core MQTT. So we have a, an MQTT abstraction layer that allows people to implement their own or integrate their own MQTT stack into this library. But mm -hmm. we take core MQTT, which is built by FreeRTOS sort of fundamentally as a, as a first party um, supported option. So with that, if you want to use core MQTT, great, that's built in. Once you do that, then we have a layer to integrate into that for the TLS and TCP IP. So we have a network interface that's really simple. You add that in, and then the whole MQTT layer, along with all the IoT features, or Azure IoT features, are taken care of for you. Love it. So it seems to be very much adapted to what um, better developers are used to do anyways, because when it comes to communicating with the world, right, this network stacks, security stacks, MQTT stacks, already things that are using today. So let me with that. Um, what is uh, the set of hardware that supports? We're talking about a middleware runs on FreeRTOS, but FreeRTOS runs on different types of hardware, right? And so you have to adapt to these underlying hardware layers. So what are the boards, the hardware that is supported today? Absolutely. Let me show my screen once again to you. So uh, folks watching this can look uh, at this uh, as the list grows. So here you see I'm looking again at the IoT middleware free RTOS repo. And there is a link down below to all of the samples we have. So I'll click on this link that will give me, that will lead me to the free RTOS samples repo. And here uh, they will find both uh, samples for uh, get devices connected to the IoT Central. So we have uh, two uh, devices here. And we also have samples that would allow uh, you to get connected to the IoT Hub. So, and this will also, we're both using uh, a hub or a combination of the device provisioning service and a hub. And here you can see that we have devices for uh, popular devices like the SP32 from Spressive. We have NXP devices. We have some uh, ST microelectronics devices. And if you don't have a device yet, you can also take a look at this and give it a try by using one of these simulations, both uh, for Linux and Windows. Got it. So that's a that's already a, a good collection of hardware. Then you, you kind of touched already on how easy it would be to port to new hardware. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. So on my screen, uh, we have a porting section for the, the source code for this repo. So we have a porting section here that goes over um, fundamentally because this is built on FreeRTOS, FreeRTOS has a huge collection of ports for the operating system itself. So we support any of those boards with a port layer. All we need is for you to tell us which port you're using, and then we can integrate into our library. Apart from that, because there's the networking aspect, FreeRTOS has some integrations for networking. I think they call it FreeRTOS Plus, so FreeRTOS Plus TCP and things. So mm -hmm. if there's a port for that for your board, then you're good to go, you can use that. Otherwise, we describe how you might want to bring a different networking layer into our repo or into our, our library, and you can then use it then. Um, but fundamentally, any of the any of the ports for the operating system itself 
if it's there, then you're good to go. Awesome. And you just mentioned that it's a GitHub repo. So everyone should be you know, able to contribute an issue or a piece of code in the form of a PR. If you have a board you want to see supported in there, uh, feel free to go to GitHub and, and contribute there. So you, you both uh, put out a very nice deep dive video um, that uh, we have a link for right below here, aka.ms slash Azure IoT middleware for free RTOS slash deep dive, where both of you walk through the middleware in details and show a nice uh, and, and complete demo. Uh, we are still on the IoT show here. We like to see demos. So how about then you take it away and you show us a little bit of that middleware so that people are just like, wow. Let me go see that deep dive after, right? But stay here for that demo. Absolutely. So I can show here essentially the samples repo. So this is where all the source code lives for our samples. We keep it separate from the, the source code itself. Um, and here we have a, a getting started guide for the STM32 L475, the discovery board. Um, I have one right here that's running. And so in this guide, uh, we have a total completion time of about 30 minutes to install all of the dev tools and get the board up and running. Let's say start the, the Azure instances that you need. And I'll skip some of this. I'll go over sort of the high level, but the, the documents there, if anyone wants to actually go there and go through it themselves. So here we have some prerequisites. So we'll let you know what you actually need in order for this to run. Uh, we have some preparation for the development environment, installing the tools, uh, creating the cloud application. So this is gonna use IoT Central. So I have already created an IoT Central application and a device, um, but here gives details of how to do that yourself. So once you do that, you create your device, you get some authentication um, tokens, you get a SAS key here, and you create your device ID. We then describe where you need to put that in the source code in order to get this demo to run. So once you update the Wi-Fi, because this board here has Wi-Fi support, um, you have to plug in the Wi-Fi network and the password. You input the ID scope, registration ID, and symmetric key for DPS, and then the subsequent connection to IoT Hub, and then you build it. So we have the, the build instructions here. And once you do that, this device is really great because it has a drag and drop feature. So you can drag and drop the, the binary onto the device. It shows up as a drive on your, on your uh, machine. So once you drag it over, it'll flash the device, and then you should be good to go and run. So this is sort of a high level, what the board looks like, the things that you need to specifically look out for. I luckily have been having this board running a little bit um, so that the actual data coming in, so this is live data coming in off of this board. Um, and let's see, so we have some information here for accelerometer. Uh, for gyroscopes and things like that. So what's nice is this this device or this sample has been developed with plug and play. So all mm -hmm. the capabilities of the device have been modeled and therefore IoT Central will actually be able to understand all of those different readings, the telemetry, the properties. And so it'll display it nicely for you right out of the box. So the device will connect uh, IoT Central will understand the document representation of that device, and then it'll start showing all this information for you automatically, which is really great. And that's 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 one of the uh, definitely one of the cooler demos that we have for the middleware. Nice, love it, sweet. And actually, I like the way you're presenting that IoT Central application because as an embedded developer, you might be okay. I don't want to have to do anything with web development and you know JSON deciphering and whatnot. I want to just like work on my hardware and being able to send data and so someone else to deal with it. But here, uh, even as an embedded developer, you can you can implement that end-to-end -end experience. You're with CMake, you know, building that image for the for the embedded device, like usually. And now you can build a, a very rich interface using IT Central drag and drop and very intuitive uh, ways of developing. And as you mentioned, play, plug and play for uh, for the convention between the device and the cloud. The samples do have plug and play in there. So people can see that it's not rocket science either. It's like a JSON formatting of the messages for the data, right? Absolutely, yep. Awesome. So. People, I'm sure, are stoked. They want to connect their free RTOS devices. Um, I think the both of you have also put together a blog post that uh, people can go read and find all the resources. So that's aka.ms slash Azure IoT middleware for free RTOS slash blog. 
Wellington Dane, I'm sure I'm going to see you again soon on the IoT show for more about stuff for embedded developers. We love that, and we look forward to having you back. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Definitely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, and uh, see you soon on the IoT show. Bye-bye.